questions, Richard Fluke has some answer for you. Richard, we already have you on stage. <laughs> Please give a big round of applause for Richard Fluke. How are you all doing? Huh? Oh, there's a huh? <laughs> Is it? Can you hear me? Good. Okay. Thank you for uh, inviting me. I have a presentation for you that I'd like to share. Um, I think is it showing up here? And and the, the presentation is quite short, but fun. And then what I would like to do is to do a demonstration. Because I'd like to share with you just some of the things that have uh, influenced me over the last, um, let's see, 25 years of research into this, this area. So what I want to share with you is something called the fourth nervous system. So some of you are saying, well, perhaps, what, what's the, f I know the four, first nervous system, I did not, or oh, was not aware there were four. Well, it appears that there are. We have our brain. Everybody understands the brain, right? You know that's a nervous system in medicine, yeah. But did you also know that there is a nervous system in the heart? Okay. Which I think we're now understanding. But there's also a nervous system in the gut. Medi medical people know this. It's called the enteric nervous system. But they dismiss it because it's stinky and smelly. But I also want to propose something else. The thing is, nervous systems, what do they do? They transmit and receive energy. True? So I want to propose that there is another nervous system. And it's called water. And it's the fourth nervous system. But before we get into water, let's talk about uh, my most favorite subject, me. No, I, just kidding. <laughs> I wanted to give you a very brief history. I came across um, Hammer's work in 1992. It's way before metamedicine was around. And uh, I was searching as to why did my mother get breast cancer. And it, it gave me the answer. It was an, a hallelujah moment. But I had already, uh, basically, I was studying NLP, or Neuro Linguistic Programming, at the time. And I was over in the United States, and that's where I met uh, the great uh, Johannes Fischlinger, who we had on earlier. Um, and uh, I met him during, um, before Meta Medicine was even around. And I just want to say to Johannes, love and gratitude to you. You are a great man. Thank you. Thank you for showing us such great information. Um, and I was trained towards becoming an NLP master trainer, which is as high as you get. And then I came across Meta Medicine and went, this is my journey. So I wrote a book called Why Am I Sick? Why am I keep checking this? I should just flip this around. Um, some of you have this book. There's a Hay House version. And there's also the, uh, the original version. So I think that's just pulled that out, hasn't it? Don't touch it. Don't touch it. And so I, I read that book and then, because I really wanted to understand why do we get sick. And I got answers through, through Meta Medicine. But I've also been in India several times, actually, with the, with the fabulous Anu Mehta. Isn't she wonderful? Oh, absolutely wonderful. Uh, but um, I left Meta to explore how can we heal? Because I, I knew in my heart there was some other pieces, and I didn't know where they were. So I went on a journey. And I created something called Advanced Clearing Energetics, which is that. And my quest was to quickly find and clear the shocks that cause diseases naturally. Being an NLP guy, this is what we do. But first, I want to tell you a story. It's a Bollywood story. And uh, the story starts with um, a young girl. Her name is Angel. And she had a very happy family life. And every summer, she would come from Delhi down to Mumbai to meet her great uncle, great uncle Richard Udensova. And uh, she had a wonderful time. She had a brother, and the mother and father were very happy. And then her brother got sick. 
and he got swelling in the brain. And all the doctors, they could do nothing with this. So they traveled from Delhi down to see Great Uncle Richard Udensover. And Great Uncle Richard Udensover couldn't solve the problem. And unfortunately, her brother died. This then set a whole load of problems off because now the mother was very, very depressed and the father got very ill as well. In fact, he abused Angel for many, many years. And she got many problems, including she lost her period and uh, other psychological issues. But it came the time when her parents said, you need to get married. Oh, and also the other thing is that they stopped going to see great uncle Richard in Mumbai, period. So then what happened in this story was that she went and she was on lots and lots of medication to try and solve the problem. And uh, her parents decided that she, it was time for her to be married. So they went um, and they found a beautiful man called Sai, which she liked a lot. But the problem with Sai was, well, it actually wasn't the problem with Sai. It was the problem with Angel. Because although she liked Sai a lot, she was actually in love with Sai's sister. So this caused a lot of problems, you, as you can imagine. So she then went to, back to her father and said, look, I'm on all this medication. She did not want to share what was going on with him, with her, sorry. I'm on all this medication and I have a horrible problem. And she said, uh, he said, well, what do you want to do about it? And she said, I want to go to Mumbai. and I want to see great uncle Richard. And he said, no, not on my dead body will you ever go and see that man. But she defied her father, although she loved him very much. So he, she came down to Mumbai and she sat down with uh, great uncle Richard and said, look, I want to clear some things up. The first thing I want to say is I'm here, not on my father's will. But also, why did my brother die? And... Also, great uncle Richard said, I don't know, but I think I now have some answers. But it's only very recently that I've made the discoveries. And she said, oh, okay. But he said then, what about you, angel? You want to heal. I hear you have not had a period for many years and that you like girls. This is not the, and you want to be married. And you cannot go into a marriage knowing you cannot conceive. What to do? What do you do? And he, she said, well, I was hoping that you would answer that question. He says, I cannot answer that question. In fact, I can't even heal you. And she said, but this is crazy. I've traveled from uh, Mumbai, sorry, from Delhi to Mumbai. And you always would heal people and you would help people. And it was always a wonderful time. But... Why can't you heal me? She said, I cannot heal you. But I know people that can. And I'd like you to go on a quest. And uh, he, he said, she said, where do you want to go? Where do you want me to go? I will do anything. And with that, he said, I want you to go and see Guru Anu. She's in Mumbai too. I said, oh, that's easy, no problem. And then I also want you to go and see Guru Anton. Oh, where is he? Germany. And she looked rather confused. I have to travel to Germany now. Oh, yeah, yes. And then I also want you to go and see um, another guru as well. Uh, guru Kos, uh, Jasmina. And uh, he said, she said, well, where is she? Oh, New Zealand. It's not far. It's a very simple plane flight. And then uh, he said, I also want you to see one more guru, Guru Stefan. Oh, where is he? Well, he's from Germany, but he's often in Thailand. And she went, this is going to cost me a f small fortune. Why do you want me to see these people? Well, Guru Anu will teach you all about the heart. Guru Anton will teach you all about the brain. Guru Yasmin will teach you all about the gut. 
and Guru, uh, Guru Stefan will teach you all about the water. And with that, she went, but I cannot afford this. And he said, I knew this. Funny enough, there's a conference going on. It's something about being above medicine or above health. I think they call it meta health. Shall we go there? And with that, <laughs> they met all these wonderful people and many, many more, if I have not mentioned your name. Right? Then, so then what happened was she met all these people and then she came back to see great uncle Richard and she knew and she understood her problem really well. And then what he did was he said, okay, he said, I now understand my problem really well, but I still have my problem. And he said, I know. And then he sat her down and he said, please, come and talk to your spirit. And she said, my spirit? Yes, come up here. And she talked to her spirit. And there she got a really big overview of her problem and an understanding. And it answered many questions. And then he said something really strange. He says, now you have all the questions. Let's go and speak to God. And she said, I can't speak to God. I cannot do this. I said, come on up here, I show you how. And he just brought her up. And they asked many questions. And when she got the answers, everything changed. And all the wonderful energy from God flowed right down through her spirit into her water and infused into the water, right into her heart, her brain, and her belly, and her ovaries. And everything changed. So, a little Bollywood story for you. Now, the, the question that I have, and what made me look at water was, I had a client whose swelling was immense. And I went, okay, we know how to clear swelling. It's something that we've been doing quite a lot of. But then I posed the question, how come the water knows where to go? And the answer came back, water is intelligent. And I went, what? Y are you joking? Water's water. This little bottle you're saying is clever? Yeah, I don't believe you. But then I started to research. <laughs> and as I researched, I found there were many wonderful things. And in the beginning, you see, there was water. In fact, water is the second most common compound on the planet. It is everywhere in the universe. We can measure it. And water gives life. And where there is no water, there is no life. When you go out in a spaceship looking for water, for life, you look for water first. Period. Water is round at the Big Bang. And comets are made of water and dirt. And they were around at the Big Bang too. And water is around at the birth of the Earth. We know this. Science has proven this. And we are bound by huge streams of information to everything in the universe. And water plays a key role in how that information is exchanged. Now, the research for this particular piece comes from a Russian scientist. We haven't got time to watch this video. But it does basically say how comets and the Earth are interconnected. And water is always wanting to return to its purest form. It despises conflicts and loves balance. And we've all seen the wonderful work of Emoto, haven't we? But something that really interested me was his last piece, especially on a lot of his work, is he noticed that why water really wants to be is in love and gratitude. That seems to be its purest form. And if you look at this crystal for long enough, it really is very, very beautiful. Very beautiful. Water can also receive and transmit information. Water remembers anything that occurs in the space around it, and it can transmit and receive memories. And if you do not believe this, this man, Luc Montagnier, is a French virologist. He discovers the AIDS virus. He also won a Nobel Prize. Basically, he is no fool, yet he has proven categorically, and this is an old study, by the way, that water can transmit and receive information. When Dr. Crazy says the, the science of um, meta health and the future is with homeopathy and water, 
He's probably right. It is amazing. There was another guy called Jacques Benavista, who's a French immunologist. And to show you how things have changed, the, the science community discredited him. But Luc Montagnier was one of his students, and now we're seeing a Nobel Prize winner take this information to another level. Water and a vessel, because in order for water to change, it needs to be in a vessel. And water has to be in a vessel to hold its memory. You as a human are a vessel. In fact, every organ in your body is a vessel. And let's just see a little clip. This is uh, with Emoto, just to show you, and what most people are unaware of, it has to be in a vessel for this to work. This is Dr. Emoto's work. Dr. Emoto conducted another groundbreaking experiment. He placed rice into three glass beakers and covered it with water. And then every day for a month, he said thank you to one beaker. You're an idiot to the second. And the third one he completely ignored. After one month, the rice that had been thanked began to ferment, giving off a strong, pleasant aroma. rice in the second beaker turned black and the rice that was ignored began to rot. Dr. Emoto feels that this experiment provides an important lesson. It is amazing isn't it? My further research went in to find that water does something else. It creates a structure of DNA and proteins. Most people believe that DNA is the is the be all and end all. It's not. DNA is actually an antenna. It has an antenna on it that can transmit information. How does it get that information? Via the water. And water transmits energy of its surroundings to the DNA and proteins, changing them. More research that shows this, uh, another Russian scientist. What were the Russians doing? I have no idea. You don't really see very many Americans. I think I water and emotions. When water is in a vessel, emotions affect the water. You as a human are a vessel. Your organs are all vessels in your body. Another Russian scientist proving that. Sorry, crazy, I don't have enough time to go through these. So after water has been changed through its surroundings and emotions, it wants to get it wants to get back to purity. And in order to do this, it transmits its state to the world through the heart. And we know this through the Heart Mass Institute, but it's the water that's doing the transmitting. It's telling the heart what to do. It's telling the heart through the information through the other nervous systems. So the heart and the Earth's grid, the heart is transmitting its positive and negative energy through the Earth's magnetic grid, attracting others with equal positive and negative energy. Does this now start to answer Dr. Kwesi's amazing astral medicine understanding that we are predestined to get shocks. How is this happening? It's the heart. It's the water that's transmitting the information through the, the, uh, the grid. So this then po started to answer the question, why do we get sick? And I'm sure you understand. The first thing is we have this Udin moment. It was something I coined back in about 2004. So that's if you want to know the history of it. I sat there one day and said, how do we make this easy? And a, a yudin is the expression of, of the water as it is trying to get back to purity. It affects everything in a person from DNA to the proteins, you now know that, from their behavior to the energy levels. But what causes a disease is this. And we're going on a quick journey of the yudin shock. So imagine a couple that has been happily married for over 30 years. And then the husband walks in and says, uh, Darling, um, I've been sleeping with your best friend for the past uh, six months. Um, that's a Udin shock, isn't it? That's one of those. And it's unexpected and dramatic because of 30 years of marriage. Not only that, she can't even speak to her best friend. Her best friend, she says, well, she can't even speak to her other friends because they were probably involved. Embarrassment. And she has no strategy because she's not going to say, okay, darling, I'm going to get onto a website now and find another man. See you. 
not going to happen, is it? So the union has everything in it. It has the people's voices, the places, the information. We, we already know all of this. And it changes a whole person's life. And this is what one sounds and looks like. <laughs> oh, hang on. Let's come back. So she gets a bit angry, this lady. She's quite good. Completely worthless excuse for a man that I've ever met. What kind of father are you? You are the most completely worthless excuse for a man that I've ever met. What kind of caregiver are you? What do you have to show forth to your kids? So he's the vessel and she's the giver. But they were, came together for a specific reason. So what happens during a unit moment? It interrupts the rhythm of the heart first. And then it goes into the thought patterns of the brain and screws them up. And it disrupts how we feel. But it also blocks the flow of energy of the water. So why is this important? The body's master systems, they're smart. But also water accounts for 80% of who we are. And it's the smartest. Because it can hold memories and transmit and receive them. So when a Yudhi shock lands in the body, it does so in this sort of format. Practically like that, that's what my research has shown. And it causes a storm. And you also know that then this lands, the Yudin shock lands in an organ inside the body. And it switches itself on. And a Yudin shock, the whole reason for it, is it keeps bugging us until we get, we get what we're supposed to learn. That's basically what's going on. And once we have learned what we have meant to learn and the water goes back to its pure state, the organ will rest and repair itself. It's called the second phase in meta health. And wellness and balance can return. So you know that, right? You've spent enough time here. Except what you didn't know was this link between the brain and the uh, heart and the belly and the water and the organ. Okay. So we have our Yudin shocks journey, which goes from the Yudin down to the stress stage. And it then hits the eye of the storm, Yudin reversal, and then through. These are, this is the advanced clearing energetics work. It's exactly the same as what you already have. So in an ideal world, after a person has been through their disease process, they get well, they might have um, completed all those six stages, and uh, they take what they learned and they move forward. And however, in reality, and I love this little slide, <laughs> the ghost of the Yudin shock is still there. And this is what causes then disease. Now, this is the bit you've all been waiting for. So now we know how disease occurs. Why do we get sick? How the hell do we heal? We, what we do is we go into the interrupted rhythm of the heart. And all we do is we ask questions. That went from 15 to 5 in about two, two minutes. Okay. And then we go into the screwed up thought patterns of the brain. And we go into the disruptive feelings of the guts. And then we discover where the flow of energy is blocked in the water. And we bring in all the information from the six stages of our knowledge from better health. And then anything else that we can glean from the bloodline, our heritage, our past lives. Then we do something really special. Really special. We actually talk to the spirit beforehand. We then bring down an unseen higher intelligence to heal the problem. Which is pretty neat. And this switches off or unplugs the organ from the union shock. So what basically happened, how, having pieced all this together, I created something called Advanced Clearing Energetics Flow, Ace Flow. And that is the sound of uh, the heart and the earth together. So here's the ACE flow process. Actually, it's the sound of the sun. That's right, because of this. So this is what we do. We go into the heart, we go into the brain, and we go into the guts, and we go into the water, and we ask various questions. And then we look at the organs, and we take our understanding of these six stages, and then we take the understanding of the blood line and the heritage and everything else. And then what we do is we bring down a higher intelligence to heal. Bringing the light back into the water. Bringing love and purity back. It's beautiful. So, I'm going to be teaching this to uh, tomorrow. 
uh, not tomorrow, on uh, Monday. Um, I There it goes again. It's amazing, that sound. And um, I've asked very kindly Dr. Bardo if it's possible to teach on Monday, and he's teaching on Monday. And if you have never seen brain CT scans, then please go and see brain CT scans. And if you want uh, to learn how this actually works, then please, I'd love you to come and see this. Uh, the price is the same as Dr. Bader's workshop. That's what I decided that would work. And it's on Monday. Um, I fly back on uh, Monday night. Uh, so you can, learn, you can learn ACE flow. I really wanted to do a demonstration. I, we don't have any time. We've run out of time. Uh, so I got two minutes to do a demonstration. Oh, it's just not possible. But um, it, you, if you want to see a demonstration, I would love to do one. It's very quick. But it's up to people. Okay, are we allowed to do one? Do you want to come up? Yeah? Yeah. So we'll, we'll see how far we can get in a very short space of time. <laughs> okay. How are you? Okay. And it's Paru, isn't it? Paru? Your name. My name is Paru Parihar. Pa Paru. Yes. Beautiful name, Paru. So Paru and I spoke br briefly, and she said that she's had some problems with, um, what did you say? With relationships. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's see if we can go real fast with this. So, um, and the, it shows up with a problem on your shoulder, and you get migraines and headaches and everything else. A very uh, different kind of a pain. I mean, it's a throbbing pain in, uh, in the heart. I get a lot of palpitations. I feel like my heart is beating too fast. I do sweat at times. I feel very thirsty in the middle of the night. I wake up two, three times just to take water. And uh, I don't, uh, I'm not able to figure out, but I'm all the most, uh, you know, most of the time I'm anxious. Okay. I feel anxiety all over, you know, my body. And uh, I'm, I feel very much uneasy. Okay. Yeah. So this would relate to possibly uh, the change in the energy inside tachycardia with uh, the, um, if I remember, it's the left-hand side. So if you're into the meta health work, then that, that, that works with that. So don't worry too much about that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to go into the heart, okay? And as you go into the heart, are there, is there any information coming up, any thoughts, any feelings, any sounds to do with a loss of one's um, purpose in life? Maybe also some issues around you as a woman and, and not being able to, be, um, to express yourself as a woman. I believe like uh, as a woman, uh, as an academician, I'm very much feminist. I believe in uh, feminist values, uh, okay. the, the moral principles that... But what's coming up from your heart? I but, want you yeah, to come right down into your there, heart. There is something which conflicts my ideology. There okay. is something which, uh, which doesn't allow me to be. Okay. Uh, when, I, when I try to enter in any kind of relationship, where, uh, you know, apart from the love relationship, even when it comes to my father uh, or to my brother, there is a lot of conflict that happens. Okay. It's either because of my ideology, my personality, my, my value systems. I feel always being uh, belittled, being demeaned. Because I belong to a very specific community in India, that's the Rajput community, okay. where girls are not, where daughters are not being uh, treated as much uh, on equality as there the brother. But apart from that, I, I yeah. Because I'd love, I would normally hear all this, but we're going to run out of time. So I want you to come down into your belly and feel the emotions around all this, which you're expressing now. Can you feel them? Yeah. All around this whole problem. Um, uh, sorry? Of uh, not being a woman and not being respected. Because I, every time I express come my down grief, into your, come down into your belly. Every time I express my grief, yeah. uh, every time I express my resentment, because this is something I learned grief from my mother, yeah. she, she told me, you, as a woman, you have all the right to express your resentment, your grief, not to be quiet about it. You have all the right to express the person who has wronged Good. you. So, so we can I actually can. see there is a tremendous amount of information here. Grief and resentment is here. So I'm, uh, I really would love to know more, but we're going to run out of time. Now I want you to come up to this part of your brain, the right-hand side here. Could you come to that, focus your attention right in there. Sorry? Focus your attention into this part of the brain. Yeah. 
Okay, what's what's inside there about losing? I, I, I'm feeling a kind of tingling, you know, a okay. pain still. Is a pain. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is where you normally get the headaches or something around here? Uh, and I don't it, know, is your heart palpitating? No, there is no pain in the heart, okay. but pain is in the head. Pain is in the head. Come down a little bit further. Right. I wanted to get her into tachycardia, into the there. Now, what's going on in there as far as this problem is concerned? You can see a change in the, in the head. So, now taking all this information, okay, you understand it all. You understand this problem, do you? Yeah, yes. I understand. Go into the water in your body. Yeah. You're 80% water. You could go practically anywhere. So, anywhere the, where the water is, your whole body. Yeah. And what is the water saying to you? How is it not flowing correctly for you as a woman? How is it like? What? Not flowing correctly for you as a woman. Can um, you feel the water? Oh Sense it. Oh. See, um, uh, I, I'm in continuous uh, conflict uh, b b because as a woman we are being told not to express... Uh, but what is the water telling you? Uh, sorry? The water in your body. Can you feel the water in your body? What is it saying to you? It's in conflict. How does it not flow? See the water. How is it not flowing? How is it not? Flowing. Flow. Uh, You're doing great. I feel it more concentrating on my stomach side. Okay. When I take water at the time of uh, any crisis situation, any crisis anxiety mode, when I have a lot of anxiety, uh, what is going on, you know, behind my back, what my uh, boyfriend is going to do. Right, so okay. I have a lot of anxiety and so the water So what is the water take, doing though? How is water for the time being helps no, me the out. the water inside your body. Yeah, it helps me out here. Okay. Because in the middle of night when I have that kind of anxiety, uh, you know, issues, I take water. I take a water two, three times. Oh, I am okay. not able to sleep uh, uninterruptedly. Right, I understand. I, I wake up many times. But not water that you drink, the water inside your body. Yeah. How is the water inside your body when you think of everything that's going on in your heart, inside your brain, inside your belly? How is the water inside your body? Not the water you drink, the water in you. No. Uh, well, uh, I'm not able to express, like, what do you want? I like, want you to get into the water inside your body. Close your eyes, feel the water inside your body. When you see the water inside your body, is it flowing or is it stuck? No, I it feel it uh, very smoothly uh, flowing and uh, uninterruptedly it's flowing. And it's uh, flowing at a very uh, balanced pace. Right. It is not in a rush, it's not, uh, you know, it's just balanced in its pace. So where's it's smooth. It's smooth? Yeah. Okay, so where's, how does this relate then to the problem? When I was feeling that, uh, I just want to share with you. Yeah. When I was feeling the flow of water inside my body, there was no sensation of pain in my brain. So, but the water is in all of your body? Yeah. So inside your brain, inside your heart, inside your belly, and basically down this sort of side inside your esophagus as well, all of that inside your stomach. So now when you think of all of that, how does the water not flow? Because it will not flow properly, because it's not flowing up to your brain. When I'm in problem. Mm. How does I'm it look when it, you're in a problem? Close your eyes and just see the water inside your body when you think of the jealousy. Do you imagine myself in problem? Yeah. I have a lot of pain here when I'm okay. in problem. And it's how does the, the pain water... The concentrated here only and water for some time being safe for some minutes. It helps me, uh, you know, release yes, myself that's from the pain. drinking the water. But again it comes back. I understand. Okay. And a constant inflammation on this side. A very burning sensation, inflammation on this side. So we could actually do more understanding of this. I'm going to run out of time otherwise. So what I want you to do is, that I want you to see when it's burning here, how does the water in your body feel? How does the water in my body feel? Mm. When it is burning. When, I, when, I'm, when I'm having problem? Mm. It's like, it's confused, you know. It doesn't know where to go. It's like, it's like being stopped many times. It is being like directionless. It's like, you know, it doesn't have any motion. It's being stopped many times. Sometimes it's coming up, sometimes it's going down. It's all confused. Okay. And so this is what we find with water. 
So this problem is not there all the time, it's being triggered off as well, which is amazing. So now what I want you to do is I want you to go up into your spirit. I want you to go up here. So close your eyes and go up into your spirit. And I want you to look down on your problem, on your partner, on being a woman, on what your mother said, on everything that's inside your heart towards this problem, everything inside your belly towards this problem, and the fact that it affects your heart rhythm, and it also affects your, uh, the uh, acid in your stomach, and it also affects your belly. As you see all of these things, and everything that you've basically said, who are you? Who are you? Looking down from your spirit up here on you and all this problem. Who are you? I'm an enlightened uh, human being. I'm a spiritual human being. I'm affected with how people have treated me. Like, I do have feelings, I do have emotions. Mm. I've, I've been, I've, I just feel, feel like I've been belittled, demeaned. Sometimes okay. when I was not even, uh, you know, at fault, but I was courageous enough to take my life in my own hands and to be um, a responsible, you know, person to lead my life in a very constructive manner and to prove myself. But there is one part of my life which is still facing that void. I am unable to fill up that void. I am unable to understand how to react to that void feeling, how okay. to react to that. Perfect. Now what I want you to do is something else. I want you to come up even higher up into your spirit. Now we have a lot of information. And you would never go and speak to God and not have, w without some good questions to ask. So let's ask a question then. First question is, what do you need to learn from all of this, especially this void? What, what is the first question? What do you need to learn from all of this, especially the void? What I have learned through all the experiences? No, you want to go and ask God. From? Come all the way up higher. Yeah. Go higher up. Come up here and meet me up here. Okay. That's it, good. Ask the question of God. What do I need to learn from the void? I don't want to talk to him. You don't want to talk to him? It's not a him. Um, it's not a he either. It's God. God will always talk to you because if you're in the right place, God will talk to you. There you go. Got it? Next question I want you to ask. Stay up there. Stay up there. Come here with me. God's a beautiful, beautiful place. I want you to ask a question. What is the one question I need to ask so that this heals? Ask God that question. Yeah, I just want to ask him. Ask him. Like, why did he take my mother away from me? Okay, now, listen to the answer. When I wanted her the most, and I was still dependent on her for all my emotional problems, for all my personal and professional learning, she was such a beautiful mentor. God, why he took your mother away from you? And listen for the answer. Listen for the answer. There it comes. Have you got the answer? There it comes. No? I have a kind of uh, disliking for that supreme being. Then get up here, come here, come even higher up, even higher up, even higher up, even higher up, that's good, come up higher. And ask again, why did, why was my mother taken away from me? And what does he say, or what does she say, what does God say? Like, I, I'm, I feel like I'm in communion with my mother. Hmm? I'm in communion with my mother and she's like, she's like guiding me, she's helping me come over from this situation, she's asking me to take, have patience, have perseverance in life and focusing on my goals 
and letting go of the people, the things which are not meant to be for me, which are not helping me in my purpose of life, which are not giving me any meaning to my life. Can you feel the energy of that? Excuse me? Can you feel the energy of that? Yeah. Of I her? Feel, I feel quite better. I feel quite happy when I am in communion with my mother. Mm. So he's, you have not. Have you got your answer? Yeah. So now bring the energy of that yeah. down into your spirit. Okay? Yeah. Got that? Yeah. And bring it down into the water. Okay. There, you feel that? Yeah. Yeah. It's the energy of your mother. The true energy of that beautiful mother. And let that energy now flow into your heart, into your belly, into your stomach, and into your brain. There we go. I have no, like, no pain. I'm, I'm at ease with myself. We test in a second. I'm just going to let that flow in. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel? Yeah. Different? I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah. So how does, uh, just one a couple of tests, because I know some people might think, oh, this is a trick. It's no trick. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> I've been there too, and it's absolutely amazing. Now, can you feel the joy? Because I am tingling. Can you feel the joy? Is you tingling all over? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's the that's the energy. Yeah. Thank you so much. I gotta ask you one more time, a couple of times. Now, what do you think of your partner? When you think of him? Maybe my, I, I feel like my problem begins when I try to react to how people behave with me, how people uh, act towards me. But now with this new energy inside you, in all the water, inside your heart, in your brain, in your belly, and all the organs, how do you react now? Sorry? How do you react now? I react you know, now in a very balanced manner. I mean, it's, I know it doesn't, it doesn't matter because those people, are, they don't matter to me. So I know what is functional for me and what is dysfunctional, where it's not going to work what is going to benefit in my life. So how I have to make the things workable in my life. What things are important. So when you go into your heart now, what do you feel? What do you see? I feel all content. I feel all happy about the things. And what about I, in the I don't brain? feel anxiety. You don't feel an, any anxiety? No. When was the last time you didn't feel any anxiety? Two days uh, ago. Two days. And fear and anxiety always couple together. It, they always come together. So can you get the fear and anxiety back? Just try. Because they're not going to be convinced. Who? They are not going to be convinced if the fear and anxiety is still there. Okay. Try and get it back. No. Try. You were good at this. Like how, what, what, like what do you expect? I... Well, a moment ago, literally, I don't know how many minutes ago, we're a bit late, you had anxiety, you thought about your husband, he was always cheating on you. you no, thought not about, husband, oh, I'm not married. Oh, your boyfriend. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> your boyfriend, or another yeah. boyfriend. Now what yeah. do you think? See, I feel that I'm not in control or, or over the other person's behavior right. about their habits, about their pattern of life about their lifestyle. What I'm in control of is my own uh, thinking, is my own emotions, is my own behavior. So I should not allow others to control my mind, to control my feelings and let uh, be affected by them. Good job. Thank you very much, Thank you. Thank you. Give me a hug. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So that's how it works. We need to complete. Um, I need to just finish my story. So what happened uh, with uh, Angel was um, she did, after this time, she got her periods back. And she saw also, um, uh, she got married and she fell in love with her man and she was no longer in love with women. 
and she got off of all her medication. And then they partied, like the, like the Indians know how to party. And I'd love to, I was going to have a piece of music, but I couldn't, we, we ran out of time. But you can imagine. So thank you very, very much. This is Ace Flow, and uh, you've been wonderful. Thank you for letting me share this material with you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, the workshop Monday, um, I think we're at 9.30, is that right? 9.30 till 5. Come and experience this. Come and it, it, I will teach you how it's done. Okay? See you then. Crazy. This time I won't have the last word. You will have it. You will have the last word. I've got the last but second. I just want to acknowledge Richard for being here um, because, as he said, 2011 was the last time he was at the conference of MetaHealth because he went on a quest where he wanted to find tools for transformation. And at that time, Imma was in developing more the teaching. And Richard said, my quest is different, so I go my way. And it doesn't mean that we were not cooperating and not friends anymore. And when the in conference was going to be in India, and Richard was originally, no, is originally Anu Mehta's master trainer, Anu said he has to be here. Yeah? By all means, because he needs to be acknowledged. Because without him teaching Anu, um, we wouldn't have the conference. And when then he decided, I'm going to my quest, he then talked to me and said, Crazy, I'm going on my own way now. I'll, I'll be back with Emma, but in the meantime, have a look at Anu. And then I took over from him. And I want to thank you very much because he's such an inspirational woman. Thank you, Richard, for sharing fourth nervous system with us. Let's complete our day with meditation as we are doing from past two days. Today we'll have angel meditation by Purnima Dayal. May I request Purnima Dayal to please come on stage? So Purnima is somebody I met, uh, I've been meeting.